you know, like a good meal, you like to savor it, you know, you have to take your time and enjoy every bit of it. And I woke up this morning in this, um, like, I'm never going to blog again ever, but Fukushima. And then I watched a video from D News, uh, Discovery Channel, by the way. And I was reinvigorated with all the lies and the misrepresentation and the outright, outrageous, blatant, blatant uh, misdirections that they're using in that video that I'm going to tear apart. I'm going to tear apart. You know, haven't, haven't you always wanted to take apart one of these big shot teleprompt readers? I mean, they probably haven't got an actual thought in their head. They got so many lights and makeup on them. They got so many people. Oh, you're great. You, you, you do videos for Discovery Channel. You must be something special. You must be real. You got to use science. And they came out with this map of the tsunami. And then they tried to use that to debunk Fukushima. It's it's going to be a hell. There's no doubt about it. Because it's, it's non-stop lies. The links are below this video. And I was totally, you know, I was like... How do I do that? How do I just come out and bash him? I can come out and do it in like 60 seconds, but what's the fun in that? I want to take my time and tear their legs off one at a time. Literally. I got to start getting these voodoo dolls and getting a bunch of needles, and every time I stick it to them, put a needle in them. Okay, here we go. Let's um, scroll down, make sure we keep up with any comments that might show up. Hi, John. Hi, Unseen Recording. And the map you see in front of me is a peer-reviewed academic external uh, study that was peer-reviewed by other institutions that shows a two-week dispersal of the first two weeks of Fukushima. And their video that we're going to tear apart here in a moment is only three minutes and 21 seconds long, so I'm going to try to stretch it out as long as I can. And let's start off with their... Uh, their craziness. Uh, by the way, they got really terrible music. It's uh, definitely porno music or something after the first few seconds. It's, it's despicable. Here we go. It's been almost three years and the Fukushima nuclear power plant is still making headlines. Three years and still making headlines like it's a crime or something. Like uh, he can't understand, he can't wrap his mind around it. The teleprompter is telling him what to say, remember. But he's acting. He's an actor. His job is to sell is to sell it. Whatever he sees in front of him, put on the smile and sell it. Excuse me, here we go. Though often it's for the completely wrong reasons. Often it's because the completely wrong reason. I'm paraphrasing his movements that time. Hey people, Trace here, setting the record straight for D News. If you yeah. hear that, he's setting the record straight. He's the super duper snoof that has went out and found all the facts so here we go you go on facebook or tumblr or twitter or wherever and you look for information on fukushima you're going to run into a lot of you go on facebook and tumblr and look for information who's he talking to right so he's looking for people that have no concept of real news anybody goes to tumblr facebook for their news really got some serious issues you know, there's so many peer review academic studies, like the one I got below it, that shows a two-week dispersal. Imagine there's... Get into it. Keep Lies going. and myths. Journalism is here to Lies make sure the truth is being delivered, not rumor and conjecture. He says journalist. He's the journalist, and he represents the journalists, and they're going to bring us the truth and not conjectures. That's an interesting word. So, if you go over to his page... Uh, he's got the second video, last video they put up was, You're like, don't help charities. But then the one universe word, pop music makes solar cells more efficient, sex versus guns, why women live longer, how uh, the five nastiest things in your food, I can guarantee he's not going to be talking about GMO or glossophates or formaldehydes that are engineered into your food. They got a video, could a pill help us regrow our limbs? And how fire burns in space. See, if you're a journalist and you write about stuff like that, you don't got any merit right off the bat. That's, you lost any possibility of merit. You don't get a merit just because you have a journalist degree, okay? That's, I don't know where you get this concept that you have merit because you're up with the Discovery Channel. 
Let's keep going. I just want you to let you know what kind of journalist he actually is before I get into the video. That's where social media comes in. We've gathered some examples to debunk some of these Fukushima... Uh, uh, Fuku-ups, if you will. Fuku-ups. Fuku-ups, if you will. Now, he stole that word from all the, the people out there that have been bashing TEPCO. You might have heard of Fukushima was leaking radioactive water into the ocean at a rate of about 300 tons a day. He it put, made its way... They put 272 tons there on the screen. And that's at uh, 43 seconds into the video. 272, hang on. i got to bring up the page because I'm back over on the other one. Hi, T. Canterbury. Hi, Tracy. John, I'm coming over to you in a minute. It's only a three-minute video, so I'm going to turn them apart. So he says 300 tons, but then the front of him shows up 272 tons. Now, he doesn't mention the fact that there's three melted cores. And I'm going to come up to that a little bit more in later because it's something he says at the very end of the video. But it's important for people to realize the map you're seeing on the screen is based up on two weeks dispersal. Now they're confirming it's 300 tons a day going into the ocean, and they're going to try to marginalize that every way possible. But uh, think about what the isotope does. It's putting up all these gamma and betas, right? At the rate of billions and trillions and trillions and trillions and trillions, it kills all the oxygen in the ocean. It, uh, and that's why that dispersal map you see shows the entire Pacific Ocean radiated in six years. And so this guy is a mass murderer. Let's keep going. Around social media, usually accompanied by a map, which I think we've got somewhere. Now he's so going to show the tsunami map. This map doesn't measure radioactivity at all. Note the legend. Right? So he's going to use that map. The map I got up on the screen is the one that does it. And the links to that peer review academic study is below this video. And he's not going to touch on that one. He's going to show you the map of a tsunami because uh, that's the Roy Dawson trick. Remember that video made about Roy Dawson, how he tried to do the same thing to everybody? And it says centimeters. This is a real map from NOAA, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. Oh, it's a real map. Now he's got to go on down this road here. See, he's not going to show any map like you're looking at on my video right now. But it's measuring tsunami waves from the March 2011 earthquake, not radiation seepage over time. Right. 300 tons may sound like a lot, but in comparison to the ocean, it's not that much. Mostly, the experts are worried about fish immediately. The experts are worried about fish. No, the experts are worried about the death plumes of 979 days of death plumes because the rods are falling down on those melted cores he don't talk about. And that's 9,000 degree Fahrenheit. And so these rods that are, and he doesn't talk about, he only talks about uh, cesium-134. He doesn't talk about the 137. He doesn't talk about the plutonium. He doesn't talk about the strontium. He doesn't talk about the depleted uranium. He doesn't talk about the MOX fuel. He doesn't talk about the 1300 weaponized isotopes. He doesn't talk about, you need 1,300 Geiger counters that are all calibrated to each one of those 1,300 isotopes. You need 1,300 people to run those Geiger counters that know what they're doing because these Geiger counters, you have to know what you're doing. If you sniff early or you sniff too much, you destroy the ability of it. And, and that most Geiger counters only get low beta and gamma particles. They're not intended for these massive, inconceivable, like the dispersion shows in the picture you're looking at, like the peer review studies we're talking about down below. And like all the experts are actually talking about, let's keep going. Completely around the planet, not on the beaches of California or Mexico or Canada. Which Even is, the Hawaii. Like, you shouldn't speak for Canada, okay? You go to Mexico, United States, and Canada. Who do you think you are? Who do you think you are by not backing that up, that you can make those assertions? Uh, Trace? You murderer? You mass murderer? Who do you think you are? Let's keep going. I State Department of Health has been monitoring their water for radioactive... Yeah, they decommissioned all the radioactive, uh, like up in Alaska. That's in the major mainstream news. They've done it here in British Columbia. They're doing it all along the coast. Why are they decommissioning the Geiger counters that they're, they actually have there, which are probably all well useless anyway, but they do show some of the cesium. Let's keep going. Material, and they are way closer than the Western Americas. And they've got nada, zip. They got not a zip because you need 1300 Geiger counters. You need to know what you're doing. You got to catch the gamma rays while they're airborne. They're salutable. They go into the soil really quick. I'm yelling. Sorry. And once again, it's not just the 300 tons a day. And they put up, he says 300 tons, they put up 272 tons on the screen. It's not just that. There's three cores down there. And they usually took a million gallons a minute. And the model that's built into these power plants, which are nuclear industrial machines, and power is just a byproduct of it, 
is a million gallons a minute. There's 1,440 minutes in a day, and there's three melted cores. And if those cores didn't have all that water running over it and kept them under the water all that time, they couldn't get on that site because that's three supernovas at the Fukushima prefecture. Let me keep going. So I want you to think about the 4.3 billion gallons a day he's not going to put into the equation every day for 979 days. Zero, nothing. The reason is, it's right? been more than two years. The Fukushima plant's water runoff has not only been diluted into the ocean, 300 tons. You can't dilute an isotope. You spread it out, it becomes more dangerous. See, uh, the isotopes that we're talking about are unbelievable. A Dixie cup will kill everybody in a restaurant inside of an hour. And they'll do that every day for a million years or a billion years, depending on the types of isotopes we're talking about. We don't know because MOX fuel had a million times more deadly than any other reactor on this planet. And this is outrageous. This is absolutely outrageous that he's saying this stuff. Today sounds like a lot, but since we know Teleprop that water weighs just over eight pounds, three hundred tons is seven eight pounds gallons. And now he's trying to divide it all the way up into that, right? And and what he's really telling you is that this stuff deludes our right and becomes more deadly, becomes more concentrated as it comes across the ocean, like the peer review academic journals show. Like I'm so upset with these people. This is an outrageous fabrication and amount of lies that they're spewing. These teleprompt readers are definitely going to pay the price down the road for their lies. We will not forget these lies. Make no mistake about it. Which is only about 1,500 bathtubs full of water. Yeah, and how does that work out for the 4.3 billion gallons a day that's running over the coriums, the hot coriums, the three melted cores that are sitting on the floor? What about the riverbed that comes out, the backup plan for these facilities is for the ocean to come in and go on top of that, or for a river? Which is why they put 100 foot of topsoil there. The cores melt down through that. When they have an explosion, all the rods go up near and land in that topsoil. They spray water on it, it turns the mud, and the rods get absorbed, but they got to keep spraying water on it. See how that works. And then all the rainwater, all the snow, all the typhoons picking up all those isotopes and whipping them up. He's not going to tell you why the ocean is heating up because of all of these isotopes. And what you're looking at is a two-week dispersal if you happen to be just joining this video. And that model is not including the 4.3 billion gallons a day running out underneath this place over the hot coriums that are beyond contamination, beyond your imagination. At, and, and a dose is so small that we can barely map a wrap our minds around it on the atomic level will give you pituitary cancers, will give you breast cancers and prostate cancers and liver cancers and lung cancers. And this stuff gets aerosol and gets carried across the ocean like the Chinese, uh, Japanese balloons in 1944 did. The jet streams are running at 100 miles an hour, so every 24 hours that's 2400 miles. So the model's around uh, three days before it lands on our coastline. It quickly gets absorbed into our soil and into our surroundings. And it also attacks the microlife on the shorelines. And so we're seeing that disappearing right around the Pacific Basin. But this guy only wants to deal with a teleprompter and he doesn't want to have any accountability, which we're going to deny him today. It's not many in comparison. The 187 quintillion gallons in the ocean, 300 uh, million kilometers is how big the ocean is. And look at the dispersal rate for two weeks. Get a load how this stuff works. Because it's pumping out all these gammas and beta particles. And so as you make it disperse out a little bit, it's not diluting, it's dispersing. As it disperses out, it becomes more encompassing. It kills all the oxygen in the water. It kills all the protoplankton in the water. It kills the ability of the oxygenation of the ocean. So when the ocean comes in and crashes on your coastline, it normally would liberate these oxygen molecules. It doesn't do that anymore. When the rainstorms are picking up all this cesium, this strontium, this plutonium, these 1300 weaponized isotopes, I want you to think that that's a, a radioactive cloud a thousand miles by a thousand miles and it comes in and it gets up into the troposphere and gets carried around the planet. That's what the experts are saying. Not what this monster, this mass murderer, this creature gallons in the Pacific Ocean. Radioactivity also... And he, when he was saying quadrillion, they put up, he says gallons, they put up liters, 707 quadrillion liters. Monsters, I'm talking about trying to muddle the water. Decays constantly. When it decays in half, that's called a half-life. The cesium isotope CS-134 decayed more than half already. And the iodine radioactivity reported by Fukushima has a half-life of only like eight days. Yeah, and the plutonium, the strontium, the uranium has a half-life of a billion years. 
Why don't you mention that also? What do you think? That just has no, uh, doesn't go past borders? You think that's just stayed at Fukushima? Do you think those 9,000 degree Fahrenheit, three melted cores are not pumping that into our environment? And that your words are not going to kill people? And that all those spammers you got on that video that are paid spammers? They're paid spammers. That's what these networks use. They use a whole bunch of paid spammers to come in and lick their boots and give them the illusion that they're actually popular. Nobody actually goes to their site to watch their videos. They're put up on blogs all over the place. So the Hang on, we're getting there. have decayed a lot since 2011. National Geographic reported back in September that... National Geographic. ...the head of the Woods Hole <laughs> Why not a peer review study? Why do you go to National Geographic instead of the peer review study like is under my video? How hard is it to go look at that and go find it? If you even tried, you're just going to send us to a bunch of magazines, and that's your proof. That's your, that's your science. The creature. Institution for monitoring the radiation and sea life said, and I quote, Eat up. Back in the U.S., Professor Eric Norman of Berkeley did find radioactive material from Fukushima in California rainwater. Now, when he's talking about the seafood, come to the rainwater in a second, when he's talking about that seafood, he doesn't mention the hearing that's missing here. He doesn't mention the sardines that are missing here. He and the hearing that were bleeding from every orifice and all their fins. He doesn't mention that. He doesn't mention the killer whales don't sing anymore. He doesn't mention it's the lowest number of salmon we ever saw in the Pacific. He doesn't mention that the ocean currents whisk it away from Japan immediately. And that's why the dispersal model that you're looking at from the peer-reviewed academic studies is only two weeks and it shows the ocean is dead in six years. There will be no oxygen. Fish can't breed if there's no oxygen in the water. And so these people are out to, do, to murder people and to destroy lives. That's what he's doing. But it came from evaporated ocean water that rains down on us. Is it enough? But it's no problem. Enough to hurt? Nah. Nah. Same issue. Nah. Radioactive. See, there's no safe amount of radioactive. There, there is no safe amount. That's why they have to lock it up in the sarcophagus for billions of years. That's why they have uh, all these nuclear follow plans. That's why they have to wear all that special equipment at Fukushima. There is no... See, radiation... There is no safe level. There's only three natural indigenous isotopes on this planet. We're talking about weaponized isotopes. You know, if we had a piece of that rod here that atomized and came our way, I couldn't finish that sentence. It would kill you. Nah, it's okay. Right? That's a murderer. Teleprompter. ...that we would have with anything else, and Pacific evaporation is kind of a huge amount of water. Yes, yes, it is. And look at the Pacific and imagine how much water that is. Every day, there's a thousand miles of radioactive clouds coming our way. It really, truly is like that. I'm sick of people like this. I'm sick of it. Look, if the meteorite was coming at us, we would band together as a society and deal with it. That meteorite you're looking at on the screen is coming at us, and nobody wants to admit it. Everybody wants to look away. No, there's no meteorite coming at us in the sky. That's what he's saying. But anybody even tries to look will find that meteorite under my video in the peer review academic studies. Hang on, I'm keep going. We're almost here. I'll come to Bottom the line is, the Fukushima disaster was not good. It was pretty bad, but it was not the worst ever. And it's but it was not the worst ever. Did you hear that? Did you just hear that? I'm going to play that again. It was bad, but it wasn't the worst ever. Man, I better not see you. It is kind of a huge... I better not ever see you in person. The bottom line is, the Fukushima disaster was not good. It was pretty bad, but it was not the worst ever. And it's a What's so funny about that? Why is he laughing? Because <laughs> he's selling it. He's a teleprompter reader. And a, and a traitor to the human race, period. Look, Chernobyl had one. They got a 3,800-mile exclusion zone, 3,800-kilometer, rather, exclusion zone around it with levels so high, uh, it's uh, 39 billion times 30. Do the math on that per uh, minute disintegrations. And that's going to go on for about 140 years. And, Chir and, and Fukushima's got three that are out of control, that had hundreds of tons of fuel rods right on top of it, once again, that are so dangerous, a Dixie cup of it will kill everybody in a restaurant inside of an hour. Just a Dixie cup, just a tiny cup. 
And to say that that is not the worst one out there, right? That's a teleprompter reader. So that's his producers from the Discovery Channel that wrote all this out. Their job is to sell it on D News, not to fact check it, to sell it, to get up there, read that, and sell it. And somehow that gives them merit, he thinks, in his own little world. Somehow, I don't know how they can sleep at night after that video. I got no concept of how anybody, anybody can get up in front of a camera and say stuff like this. And then use, like, National Geographic's and Discovery Channel's and just nonsense as sources. I got the peer review on in my video. Go debunk that, you assholes. Sorry, You're folks. The people around the plants. Killing a dozen right away, but should we be afraid here in the United States, Canada, Mexico, and other places? We should... See, he's got no right to speak for Canada. He's got no right to speak for Mexico. He's got no right to speak for the Americans. He's not a scientist. He's not an academic. He doesn't study it. He doesn't refer to it. He doesn't use it in context ever, under any circumstances. No. Earthquakes of eight no. or higher magnitude hit only once... Eight! Look, the buildings have been... Hundreds of millions of tons have picked it up and broke its back. A 7.2 earthquake 20 days ago. Probably done the same thing. And we can't prove it because they closed down the internet. We can't get any independent pictures or videos coming out of there. The only video coming out of Japan right now is TEPCO's webcam. And for some reason, everybody conceives that as the source to use. And that's what we see everywhere for the last 20 days. Hang on. About every year since 1900. And the chances of another Fukushima are really, really low. But... But <laughs> the chances of another Fukushima are astronomical. It lives on an earthquake belt. The buildings are all destroyed. They're duct taping the tanks together. They're only bolting them together. It's so toxic that if you try to get into the plant, you, you will, they can never get your body out. It's just Still, unbelievable. This week, the Japanese government opened a windmill power generator off of the coast of Fukushima Daiichi. Right. He flips it from one, right, lies, and then comes over with, oh, they're going to that. They're going to wind power. Finally restore power to the devastated area in the wake of multiple meltdowns of the Fukushima disaster. And the Fukushima disaster happened... Right, see how he slicked that in there? Multiple meltdowns. He just slicks it right in there, you know what? Right, don't spend any... Not even a second on He goes from windmills... Too slick. There's implications far, far into the future for nuclear power, so we'll just have to see what happens. Right, for nuclear power, right? Implications, not for the human race, not for the entire species in the Pacific Ocean, but for a corporation with human rights, with personhood, cor corporate personhood. That should be under a charter so they could all be in jail or swinging from poles. Instead, they have human rights, and because they got human rights, all they can do is get a fine, not even a criminal record, but a fine and then an easy pass, and then all the media will carry him to build him back up again. Creatures like this are the most scariest thing on the planet. They are the real, you know, the real house of horrors on this planet is right there, is these people. They live that life. They believe the things they're saying on the teleprompter. It's sickening. Recently, the UK has committed to building the very first new... Look, there's Sellafield down there. It's got 8 million liters a day hemorrhaging into the ocean. It's so toxic that if a seagull lands, they have to shoot it. The wind that blows over it is contaminated. Eight million gallons a day. It takes like a hundred years to decommission these places, and he's going to sell it, right? That's what he's doing. He's selling nuclear power and then the UK. Nuclear power plant in the EU since the disaster, so at least we're moving forward. But what do you think about So at least we're moving forward. Comment. So at least we're moving forward. And subscribe for more D News. Why would anybody subscribe to you? Why should anybody care about you? You lion mouthpiece. Anyway, that was fun. A little bit off my shit. Ah, <laughs> uh, gee. D News, you do two frontal cortex. <laughs> Okay, let me come down. See what we got going on here. Okay. Hi, John. <laughs> Unseen recording. Bash those creatures. Good one. Your voice is coming through double. You're stepping on yourself. I don't know how that one's happening. 
Sheesh. Um, let's go. Here we go. Catch up on a couple of comments for a rant. Your computer crashed last night. Canterbury? Well, Tracy. Tracy says the audio uh, is good on her end. His end. It's hard to say sometimes. It's like me. I got a name with Dana, so that's a girl's name too. I knew eight girls named Dana before I met another guy named Dana. In fact, the guy I met named Dana was in the Pacific Ocean. His boat had sank during bad weather, and um, we got him and his crew, and actually transferred him in heavy weather. They threw him back in the water, and he swam over to another boat. One of them stayed with us, and we brought him back down to Vancouver. Only he was getting married to a lawyer. But anyway, they popped a plank in the side of their boat at the end of a halibut opening, and the boat floundered, and we got their mayday call. And um, I spotted the stabilizer poking out of the water. And when I asked uh, Coast Guard how many people for sure was on the boat, and I asked them for names, or they told me the names uh, was, uh, uh, it was almost the same as my name. It was pretty funny, the whole name. <coughs> but we'll never see those days again. The Pacific Ocean is dead in another year or two. There will be no oxygen in it, and then fish can't live in water with no oxygen. And the, the radiation, just a single, like if there's a single isotope in my house, this is how scary it is, my whole house becomes contaminated. Like all of Japan is supposed to be dug up. That's the protocol. If you find a sliver, just like an isotope word, in the gravel, you're supposed, with a, with a Geiger counter, you're supposed to dig up 900 foot of topsoil, 6 inches deep, put a fence around and not take, that isotope, though, now take that little piece, that little particle, you're supposed to leave that there, then walk away with a Geiger counter. So 900 feet of topsoil. So all of Japan has been hammered with these death plumes, with these massive, inconceivable death plumes of the aerosoled, atomized uh, rods, and also, you know, just the open fission that's going on. In fact, there's, uh, from what we understand, there's open fission going on in the ocean. The ocean is actually bubbling off Japan because you had... And I recorded all this originally when it happened. It was 400,000 rods. They've, they've been diluting that by saying it less rods and less rods each year. But uh, I got the AP actual reports is uh, over 400, I can't remember the, the other numbers, 430,000 rods. And these are very heavy, very uh, deadly rods. Like you say, uh, depleted uranium used to be called depleted uranium, a uh, dull ram, depleted, depleted uranium low level radioactive material. And even then, it's not low level. Because that was just before, uh, when they took it out of the ground, before they uh, weaponized it. And the whole problem right now is not just Fukushima, right? There's 440 plants that are leaching into the ocean. That's their overflow. Because if they release it into the community, through the chimneys, people might stop dropping everywhere, and they won't have their UK power plants online. They haven't even got their other ones offline. They, they haven't got a single power plant on this planet decommissioned. And if they were to go in double time right now, they still couldn't do it for another 100 years. And then you got to take all that waste. We have no way to build anything. And we use all of our resources. And by the way, you know, Discovery Channel, they got the military channel there too, right? They don't got the 5 million orphans in Afghanistan created by the military channel. They don't got the 22 veterans committing suicide every day on the military channel. They don't got the 29,000 rapes reported every year in the military on the military channel. They don't got the 5.5 million depleted uranium rounds they're firing every month in, the, in Iraq, month after month. Go look that up on the government's websites. 5.5 million rounds a month in Iraq to get 11,000 Taliban. 5 million orphans to get 11,000 Taliban. Killed everything in uh, Iraq and Afghanistan to get that same 11,000 Taliban, which they're doing everywhere else. Took away all your freedoms and all your civil liberties to get that same 11,000 Taliban that will never go away. That was created and funded by the CIA to help overthrow Saddam and has been used ever since to demonize me and you. That's why the TSA is groping hundreds of millions of people every year. Not because they, uh, they look like Al-Qaeda, but because they look, they've got mom and pa's fat little piglet on their way to Disneyland. And uh, they're conditioning people to be in a police state because that ocean, when that breaks, that's why they're trying so hard to cover it up in that video. When that ocean breaks, they're planning on creating a stampede and they're going to most likely, if we don't counter it, uh, have a lot of success with that. 
And so they're coming out trying to demonize what we're saying, the marginalized people that are, like all the experts, they don't include no experts, they, they go to Discovery Channel's experts, which are the bootlicking dummies, the useful idiots, like Trace, uh, that's doing that video in the link below, who can't even conceive, can't even conceive using a pair of studies like I got below and then extrapolating the reality of the three melted cores and the coriums and how much water has to run over that every minute for them to be able to stay on that site because that site would be gone supernova. Like you say, rocks melt at 2,000 degrees. Without that water, that site becomes a big sinkhole itself and disappears over time. And all those death plumes are continuously going up into the troposphere and the atmosphere. So, right, yellow cake. You know, Hanford, just down the road from us, got 41 miles of open pits unloined with the yellow cake in it. And once again, a Dixie cup of that will kill everybody in a restaurant. It's not the 134 cesium that he's talking about, right? He used that, oh, you know, it's got a half-life of eight days for this one or that one, right? He just pick and choose at the 1300 uh, militarized toxic isotopes and then try to convince people to murder people, right? That's what he's all about. He probably knows it. He probably enjoying everything he's doing there. Hi, D. Canterbury, both your grandchildren affected? Well, yeah, good one tonight. Sound is fine there, Canterbury, good stuff. Hi, Stormy Cloud. We are all affected. Shills News people brought off science executives to work. Um, too late, death plumes are... Yeah, the death plumes have been coming at us, aerosoled, uh, since three days after they landed on our coastline. And so over the next five and six years, you're going to see all these cancers, but they're going to blame that on the cell phones. They're going to blame that on the GMO. They're going to blame that on the vaccines. They're going to blame that on the smart meters or something else, but they're never going to blame it. But the reality of it is, see, that ocean can't sustain life. We see the mass kill off of the turtles. We see the mass kill off of the sardines. We see the mass kill off of all the industries slowly but surely as that works its way around to that dispersal but the clouds will pick it up and bring it over a lot quicker and they did quite quickly like seven or eight days later like he was talking about that was from seven or eight days after the original fukushima that they found it in the rainwater down there and it's nothing oh go away no 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 radiation is is okay in little doses is what he's saying they're not little doses okay they're high particle counts too high of a particle for your little shitty Geiger counters even pick up because they're only designed for low-level uh, backscatter radiation. They're not actually intended whatsoever for a high particle or high particulate radiation. In fact, those types of Geiger counters are extraordinarily expensive and probably too big to carry unless you can get your hands on the military uh, versions. Indiana Point in the U.S. Uh, is also in critical condition. Um, we're seeing die-off uh, from all the experts are confirming 100% of the Pacific Ocean. But those peer review academic studies, when you actually look at the numbers, 4.3 billion gallons a day running over the three melted cores that he brushes over like they don't even exist, blah, 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 you know, windmills. It's shameful. It's hurt. It hurt me watching that. That hurt me. That offended me. That truly offended me. Um, and every sense that I've had that, um, I, that enraged me that he would lie like that. And, you know, I'm looking at, I know he's a teleprompt reader, so I'm not really blaming him 100% as he's producers, just the teleprompt producers, it's, it's the editors, it's the Discovery Channel itself, right? No one actually subscribes to that channel to go watch their videos. They're put up on their blogs, Discovery Blogs, and that's where they get all their views and all their trolls and all their, which are paid trolls by them, right? Because they got all these websites, so they need all, these trolls are patrolling all their Facebooks, their Twitters, all their videos, all their chat rooms. That's their job. And they got a big team. They probably got, who knows, probably 100 people doing that. When you uh, put it into perspective of how big they are, and they need that to do damage control for their lies. That's, they need those moderators to delete me and you. And hence we are here. Yeah, that, 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 that is enraging. That is enraging. Uh, that people would do that and affect people like this in the future by tricking them. And you can see all the people there, they're trolls, uh, the ones that are sucking up. And, oh, thank you so much for straightening all this out with your magazines instead of your peer review studies, instead of your academic studies, instead of your researchers who have been at it for many years and have been all kinds of uh, radio shows and TV shows and are very articulate. Why, why not use some of them? You know? Because... 
That would screw up during your video. You can you have to make your video around the truth for a change. What would that do? Yeah, they have an agenda is to keep the truth out. And people, you know, I'm afraid. That's why I'm making this video that people will buy into that. And he will end up murdering them. And the Discovery Channel will end up murdering these people. And it's only going to, this is a hit piece up on us. Right? Because we're making waves. All the people that are pushing back. And so they need a hit piece now to come out and try to bludgeon us. But it's easy to beat them up when they don't use any facts. See? We just done it. We just destroyed them. There was nothing to it. Hi, Albert. Um, let me come down. Decanter. Well, what happens when they evacuate? If anyone lives, do they all come to the east, middle, or where? Look, you know, if there was a meteorite coming at us, what would we do as a society? If we had two years... Think of the Pacific Ocean you're looking at as that meteorite is coming at us. we got two years to get our acts together. And if the meteorite was coming to us, people wouldn't have a hard time making decisions or accepting it. Right? They get that right away because you can look up. They've seen all the Hollywood movies. Right? They know what to do. Pack it up and get somewhere <laughs> where it's not going to pitch, obviously. And where the fall-up is not going to bury you under a moil of dirt, a hot lava, and everything else. I'm trying to find my other earplug. Um... And so we, uh, we always, the only way we can really equate this is to take it in that perspective that it's a meteorite and that it's going to do some serious damage to the Northern Hemisphere. Most of the Northern Hemisphere, 80% of the, normous, the Northern Hemisphere is going to be destroyed. You're not even going to be able to, you know, if you have, a, and then you got to think about all the forest fires that you're going to have down the road that is going to liberate all those isotopes or the storms that are going to reactivate them or pick them back up. And then you got the, the coastline is getting bombarded because the ocean is one thing where it moves, right? And the clouds are picking it up and doing that too, mind you. Thousands of miles every day. But when that ocean comes in, it's always crashing into the coastline. And as this plume gets thicker and thicker and, and it's, it becomes part of that ecosystem down there, uh, it keeps getting washed back in the ocean, but that's not going to stop hemorrhaging into the ocean from Fukushima. We got 440 plants on the planet, and all the ones that are in the ocean are leaching into the ocean. But Fukushima is the bad one because it's got three melted cores. I mean, I can tell you the long list of all the dumps we got in the ocean because they can't deal with it. All the 45 gallon drums, 45,000 of them off San Francisco because they don't know what to do with it anymore. And that's the only thing they can do with it was get rid of it. In fact, the ships that take it out to sea, for instance, they have a time limit, and it doesn't matter. We've seen the pictures and videos of Greenpeace where they're dropping the 45-gallon drums of radioactive plutonium, strontium, CCM, the radioisotopes, the radionuclides, down on top of them, 45-gallon drums, right? And they got to get out of the way, and sometimes they get smashed by these drums because they got to get them off the boat or the people on the boat are going to die. they got to come off the boat, see? They can't turn back and head to port. Um... And then we have Russia with all the, the, you know, the nuclear subs sunk with the reactors and still in their cores, you know, down on the ocean floor. And then they put all the nuclear rods inside of the ships, big container ships, and sank them off Russia in the same spot. So just dumping in the ocean because they don't know what to do with it. They just gave up. And they don't care. So this has been going on for a long time. And then we have all the nuclear testing for 50 and 60s, in the 50s and 60s, into that equation. But nothing compares... To Fukushima's three melted cores and the 300 tons a day is just a disguise for the 4.3 billion gallons a day that is running out underneath it through the water, through the old riverbed where they built it up, like I covered earlier in the video. I don't want to be redundant on it. Data, Dana. Yeah, I know. I can go, can I? Or well, TV. I shut it off years ago. Yeah, I don't watch TV. Omatus. Um... Rearm. I'm thinking of making some mini greenhouses or hoop houses. Does anyone know what thickness plastic? Depends on your uh, your terrain, your area, your temperatures, your around. What you're going to be, you know, the worst case scenario. Uh, hi, Jimmy. Well, you know, whether you trust Suzuki or not, Jimmy, he said it. Right, he now he wasn't expecting, in one sense, I guess, you know, like uh, he was expecting, I'm sure, to get up on YouTube, but he wasn't expect. He he knew mainstream media wasn't there recording him, and he was right in saying what he said. I mean, he's finally coming to uh, grips with it, and you can't. It's not just him; as everybody else is saying, saying it. He had no choice if he wanted any credibility. He literally had to say something like that there. Hey, Scramble, think. 
Canterbury, yeah. So, like, uh, Suzuki came out five days after that 7.2 earthquake, right? And that uh, 10 days before that 7.2 earthquake on October 25th, 2013, you know, where the Epic Center was, Fukushima, where they blacked out the internet and the martial law, that that was five days after when um, Suzuki got on stage in Alberta during the water symposium and said that Building 4, if it goes down, it's bye-bye Japan and you have to evacuate the Northern Hemisphere. Nobody debunked that, okay? In fact, quite the opposite. See, the problem is people need to say it before other people can come out. And this is desperate stuff. And, and uh, fame and fortune doesn't matter anymore. What matters is that we get our acts together and go down and capture Japan and deal with this ourselves. Because if not, it's game over. And people like that, right, from the Discovery Channel and their producers, yeah, you're going into that list of people from down the road that hid this away. We'll never forget you for this, ever. You're not getting away with that. You're accountable. Make no mistake. In the past, you say you're accountable. We yell at you. Now we're looking for you. Now we understand that the future is we hold you to account for what you're doing to us, to the murders you're committing. See? Um, let me come down. We'll finish up on the comments. We don't have news coverage because uh, they don't want the truth to come out. They don't care. They're going to keep the lie alive as long as they can. That was the plan. But what they they forgot to put into the equation is me and you and a whole bunch of other people who worked that out, the big lie. And so we know the damage is going to be much quicker. The ocean is going to die much, much faster. The peer review studies are underneath my video, the accurate ones, not the lies, that monster from Discovery. From D, They call themselves D-News, eh? That's just... That's really sickening. Miss Milky has uh, one of those over there. Do you know of any brand to buy? I'm lost. Hi, Dana. Hi, Kimmy. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Yeah, you, well, you're pretty educated. You've been watching for a few weeks, right? You're, you're really good at this stage, I would bet. you got lots and lots of narratives to work with. Uh, let me keep going, make sure... Oh, we got, um, I can never pronounce your name, you know, Nibu Ru Magik, uh, 2012. So happy to see you, man. We love what you're doing over there. You're a fantastic boy. You've been at this a long, long time. By the way, folks, you know, like I've mentioned him before or your name before, because you've been at this so long, you don't miss a beat. And, uh, they're good, you know, you, you got a good presentation. So there's a lot dear that I still haven't caught up to, but I certainly caught up to a lot that you've already got on your site. Because um, you're like you're going to bring your your knowledge into each of those videos, right? Your accumulated knowledge into, it, and that's what makes that so important. And, and Miss Melky the Clown does the same thing, right? Where where she includes her previous knowledge as much as she can, in comparison, where she'll also put the extra links down below. Don't forget about this, and don't forget about that, right? But Noob Magic 2012, um, he's like me, where he blogs and he does um, he covers it all. It takes his time. Me, I'm more like ah, I want to tear something apart. But, you know, I got my share of knowledge. I've been at the depleted uranium for eight years. It's taken me a while to flip it over to Fukushima. For some reason, like everybody else, I guess, you know, it evaded the actual implications to uh, most extent. Or maybe there was just a switch went off. I mean, I'll never know. But that earthquake, when I couldn't find any pictures from Japan, that was what set me in motion. That's what worried me the most. And I thought that was my last blog just two days before that. I was never going to blog again because I had worked out the ocean was destroyed. And then I ended up blogging again because that got under my skin just like today that we couldn't find a picture and I realized what they were doing. That scares me that we can't get a picture. Do, right, do we can comparison? We can't do a comparison. And so we're supposed to trust a corporation instead, which are just operators. We need engineers at Fukushima. Hundreds of thousands of engineers from all over the world are trying to go there and deal with this and try to put an end to it and try to, to work it out. We need all the institutions on the planet working on this. Right, and what uh, Discovery is saying, look, oh, go back to sleep. I'm telling you right now, we're not going to forget these people. I'm definitely never going to forget these people. And like you say, folks, uh, Nuber Magic, uh, 2012. Once again, right, he's going to bring all kinds of context into his videos, folks. 
because he's been at this so long, dedicated to it, long before I got my brain wrapped around it, he was worn down, but still going strong, you know, but worn into that path of he doesn't miss nothing. That's so important to remember, right? Where me, I'm more about trying to bring the community in and answer some questions to try to give you some comfort, make you understand that you have to have hope, that you have to think about the jet streams and the ocean currents and how they interact and how there is pockets left out there where you can you can never get away from the radiation. Like Nubu Magic has said many times, 2012, that it's going to be in your water, it's going to be in your food. On top of that, you can't just can't escape it. So you have to eat healthy. You have to figure out how to get away from the GMO and eat food with nutrients in it so your body can deal with it. And I'm actually sat here when I seen that other video show up and I was making a cancer video and I was scripting it all out and just hang on a second. Oh, hang on. Because this uh, cancer links is called. It's not only Fukushima you have to worry about giving you cancer. Hot dogs will give you butt cancer, but none of the 8,500 plants we used to eat gave you cancer. Yet the man-made GMO plants all have carcinogens built into their DNA, like the formaldehyde and the glyphosate. So if 85% of everything in your supermarket will give you cancer, and literally everything in your corner shop will give you cancer, and the majority of your baby food, your pet food, your supplements, your pharmaceuticals are GMO and will give you cancer. And so I, I was typing this morning away, trying to, and then I got my screen capsules all ready, <laughs> and I, I refreshed Fukushima because I was watching the Philippines, because I go back and forth all day now, for the last seven, eight days. And I seen uh, uh, that new video, and that, I was like, oh, what's this? Fukushima radiation. What, you, what you've heard are lies. Now, how do they know what I heard? That's the question everybody should ask themselves. How could they possibly know what you heard? Right? So they're saying no matter what you heard, it's lies. Right? So this is meant to go after, you know, people in old age homes, people in jails that are forced to watch their programs. This is, uh, you know, the people that are in, uh, who gave up on life and are stuck with this illusion that the Discovery Channel is something that would actually educate you and inform you when it's there to conjecture, totally, 100%. Yep, there you go. Um, let me keep going. Lawyers are running the show. <laughs> New Brew Magic. Yeah, I bet. That's that's actually 100% correct, of course, again. Um, <laughs> it's just, that's pretty funny, actually. Well, that's the reality of it, and he's 100% right. You, the corporations, uh, they don't open their mouths unless the lawyer puts his gold seal on it and gets a $1,000 check for his signature on it. Let's go down and catch up in any comments. Um, we'll make sure we catch up here. Canterbury says you don't have a TV. And who, nor would he watch it anyway. I don't either. I can't do it. I just cannot watch a TV. You know, a number of years back, I actually broke down and went and got cable. And after about a week, I brought the cable box back. And they said, well, your first mo six months are free. And I was like, well, no, I just wanted to get cable. Every time it turns it on, they're trying to sell me something. And uh, I don't know how to stop that. And it won't. I tried everything to get it to stop doing that, but I won't do it because I just want to watch movies. And every time I try to watch a movie, I get all this these commercials of people trying to sell me stuff that I don't want. And, uh, you know, I actually said that to these people, and they were trying everything to get me to take the box back home with me. And I was like, no, I just can't have that thing in my house again. There's something fundamentally wrong. And I noticed that my I didn't get the headaches anymore either. I got headaches, right, as soon as I brought that home. Uh, let me come down, and we'll catch up on any comments, because we're pretty well... I got I ran that thing down, that, those creatures, to the dirt for the first who knows how many minutes, and then we just... Went down that road after just to keep it going for a few more minutes. Did I miss anybody? I'm just double checking. Yeah, unseen recording says German scientists found Fuki signature cesium-137 in the Atlantic Ocean six days after 311, right? They never looked for uh, plutonium. They never looked for the strontium. They never looked for the 1300 weaponized isotopes. And I know rearm, stormy cloud, we start to wind things down. I'm just making sure I catch up with everybody. And baking soda. Um, and I will 
that that video I'm making about the natural remedies, you know, papaya leaves, uh, turmeric, the DCA, you can get that at your health stores. That reduced all tumors by 70% in uh, two weeks in the peer review academic studies. So he wasn't debunked. He was um, verified repeatedly. And that has never changed, but you can't get a patent on DCA, right? And there's no money in cures. But it reduced all tumors by 70%. Everything, heart, liver, lungs, brain, breast, prostates, by 70%. That's survival, see? In two weeks, it reactivates the plates in your blood and makes your blood uh, work again. Because that's what cancer does. It binds your blood, all gets clotted together, and that's the signatures of cancer. But uh, DCA will release that immediately within minutes. And this has been proven over and over and over and over. It cured cancer over and over and over, but only because it's uh, uh, it can't get out there. To, you know, they spend $100 million on a drug, they got to make their money back. You're not going to make money back in cures, particularly when cancer is the biggest money maker of all time. And then they're feeding these poor victims GMO. So I'm going to cover all that in the video to put up on my site so people can download it and re-upload it if they like, but so they can have it in at least their own. Fluoride infuses everything on top of that, right? Uh, Nubian magic. Uh, good point, actually. Really good point. Um, make sure I got everybody. Yeah, looks good. Uh, anybody got anything they want to add on to it? 51 minutes. That's respectable. That's a respectable one. I know this one came out a bit early today, but the, uh, I wanted to get rid of the rage that I have for D news because uh, like I done earlier in the video, you know, that was pounding and grounding uh, style because I needed to get that out of my system after watching the video and realizing they're murdering people with that video. That's the most outrageous thing imaginable that they would go to that extent that they would use those sources that are so sh shady to say the least and shabby at best. When academic peer review studies are everywhere and not hard to find about the real. I mean, look at uh, Esquire done uh, a good story, a real story, you know. And you'll find big media doing that, but they don't, they don't reintroduce it in the next Fukushima stories. But they do get that story out there for their own readers so they actually understand it because a lot of them are wealthy people. But then when they come out with another story about it and it's all fluff and it gets shared everywhere, those are the stories meant to mislead you. And that's what the D News uh, YouTube channel is all about. It's taking the useful idiots, right, the ones that are the teleprompt readers, because that's what they are, put them on a pedestal because they're actually nobody, and they'll sell their souls. And they'll sell everybody around them. They'll actually go home and tell their family now that lie because they read it on the teleprompter at Discovery Channel. And that makes them special. Well, you don't have merit. By working for the Discovery Channel, I can assure you. You don't get mirrored by talking about celebrities. And you don't get mirrored by talking about fluff nonsense. Ever. Under any circumstances, you can never have it. If you do that, you can never ever get it in the future. You have to be honest and research your own facts and back it up. Like I do in my videos. And like I did under this video with the peer review academic studies that destroyed. Just that alone will destroy it. But I wanted to make a 50 minute video. So I had to go tear them apart piece by piece. Because that's how I roll. <laughs> Pound and ground. You got to have some fun when you're playing this uh, frightening, frightening real life drama. That we have a meteorite coming at us. And everybody got their blinders on. And the media says, keep your eyes closed. It's frightening. It's frightening. And so when they do that, we have to come out and curb stomp them for that. Right? That's the only solution. And make sure they recognize that we will be looking for them in the future if this goes bad. Where they're the first ones on our list. Period. And in the future, they are on our list for accountability. Anyway, regardless. Their lies are never going to be forgotten. And they will never be forgiven. The murders they're committing now will definitely be remembered in the near future. And I say near future because this game is on. It's on. When they're with lies like that, it means things are getting scary and they're trying to dissuade people from looking any further. Because if the smart people out there put their backs to the wall, these creatures are finished. They're finished. And we're smart people. I'm talking about people with, with the ability 
to make that noise. And what we what we got to do is we got to look at it. The end of video, we got to look at this like a meteorite, and we got two years to get out of the way. And as a society, we got to come together and try to deal with it. And if not, then we got to get out of the way. But the reality of it is, we're going to have to get away because there's going to be some damage, some incredible, massive amounts of damage, I should say. And already is uh, irreparable. The entire Pacific Ocean will be extinct in a few years and won't be able to create any oxygen. And so is that an environment where you're going to go hang out on the beaches? Is that an environment, you know, where these storms, because that ocean, all that radiation, that ocean, you can see what the two-week dispersal looks like right now. Imagine what is going to happen in the near future when that ocean heats up because of all this radioactive material. This is energy. All, each one of those gamma and beta are energy. And some of these little particles will put out a million beats a minute of energy. So it's like uh, it's like um, it's like H2O2, where it kills the germs. Instead of being germs, it kills the oxygen, the, the protoplankton, the oxygen uh, ability of the ocean itself. And so everything will suffer regardless, even if the radiation doesn't burn them to death, like we see with those uh, turtles, like we've seen with the herring, like we've seen with the sardines, like we've seen with the salmon, like we see now with moose and other th animals on the coastlines, like we're seeing. Uh, 3,000 kilometers off of Fukushima, and nobody even seen a bird. Nobody even seen fish. They never seen anything for 3,000 kilometers. And I have spent most of my life either on the, under the ocean or on the ocean. I got, I got over 14,000 hours logged on underwater. And there's 8,740 hours in a year or something. So I got a lot of hours underwater, folks. That's not even logged, right? Because I spent many years... Uh, wreck diving too in all my spare time and I've been to every harbor on the east coast and west coast of Canada except for about 11 and I always ran uh, the boats I always ran the fleets and what I see is there's you know I'm the last generation to ever do that that industry is history and but I understand how unique it was and how spectacular that was and how the microorganism life itself is the very foundation and how radiation destroys that instantly as those plumes come past it and they're not plumes that just you know it's good ocean behind it not at all everything behind that plume coming at us and it's going to be on our coastline in about two months that plume it's working its way around the coastline see the dispersal you're looking at on the screen is over six years from two weeks dispersal from fukushima not the 300 tons a day they emit to not the 4.3 billion gallons a day that has to run over the cores the melted the three melted cores there's three million gallons a million gallons each times 1440 minutes in a day for that math by the way and when you put that all that into the model right they couldn't pos discovery channel couldn't possibly possibly be more wrong and more cultable because they know that they have every opportunity to know all of this they went the route they did right they came up with the 134 cesium because that was the easiest one to try to use to trick people to fool people and to make sure that they die of cancers down the road quicker because they weren't given the opportunity to make their own decisions unlike you who are already done all that and understand why we do the things we do today yeah, and we have to do every day like Nubur magic has to do all the time he can't stop himself from doing that he's compelled right there's nothing that can never change see because he understands he's one of the few out there that actually really truly understands the, the deepness of what he talks about and the impacts of it and um like miss Ma uh, miss milky the clown uh, these people are compelled uh, and something like myself where i don't understand it but i understand that i have to always be right you know in the sense where i don't over exaggerate i don't misrepresent i don't uh, use unfounded sources i don't use conjectures without making it quite plain that that was the only way we can come up with that part of the conversation so i come down i'll catch up on anything hawaii is going to pop um and we'll wind it down from right here and turmeric uh, D. Canterbury is yeah, it's so good. It's got 700 peer review academic studies. Hi, Panzer. We'll all be sick, and they'll be in their bunkers, and we'll dig them up with shovels. Is Obama wearing astronaut suit at the press conferences yet? Yeah. Too late for the bunkers, is right, Stormy Cloud. Roper, 1967. What time did you start your discussions? Well, today uh, it was uh, dependent upon uh, rage.
So because of that video that I'd done at the beginning of it sent me into a rage. Thank you, Albert. Um, and Kim is talking about uh, using turmeric. Turmeric and coconut milk. Thank you. That's such a good one. You don't want to heat it up, but that's incredible. That's been shown to reverse Alzheimer's. Not completely, but so that they almost become independent. So 1967, I don't know what time. Every day I do one anyway. It's usually later in the day. It's this time or a few hours later. This is usually the earliest I'll show up. A scatter time might be earlier if i got to go do something. I'll still do the show some way along the way, no matter what. Um... I'll come down and make sure I get a last couple of comments. I'll just say hi to everybody for a takeoff, I guess. De Canterbury, um, Nuber Magic, uh, thank you for dropping in, by the way. Scramble Tank, we got Stormy Cloud, Alberts, uh, 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 Rearm, Kim, and a lot of times I can't pronounce your name, so I'll, I'll pronounce one part of it. Thank you, Kim, by the way. Jack, uh, yep, I think we're getting there. I'm getting better at that too, but I just think that if people are coming to my stream, and I know uh, Nancy Redstar uh, can't comment, and so hi Nancy. Oh, you're, you'll be there an hour or later for sure. And Mr. No Budget Films, thank you. And once again, you know, That was a really good beating today. We gave him big time. We're up to one hour, one minute. So we'll we'll close it down. And I read you that little bit that I've been typing up all morning to make the cancer video because I want to make something really interesting for people and so that if they show it to their loved ones and everybody else. And it's just all natural. See, that's what a pharmaceutical is. It's a natural product that they synth synthesize and then sold to you as a cure. And then you use GMO, which has all the nutrients engineered out of it, and five toxins, like formaldehyde and glyphosate, engineered into it. And so, like dandelion root tea, as I say every time now, is your best friend, dandelion. And all you do is, any you can take the whole dandelion, right out of the ground, roots and all, give it a wash, put it in a pot, boil it for 40 minutes, not too hot, and drink two cups a day. And that's every nutrient and every mineral, everything your body ever wanted. And didn't even know it wanted but was necessary for your body. And then mountain water. Mountain water is what's known as structured water. And structured water has been proven repeatedly in institutions right around this planet, and I've covered it many times. Uh, it's magic, true magic, on your body and your blood and your ability to fight off illnesses, including cancers, is that that mountain water itself, see? The stuff that runs through your tap is no longer structured water. The stuff in the mountains or in the springs, the deep springs, that's uh, what's known as structured water. And if you don't know much about it, look it up. It won't take you long. Uh, but that's one of the best things you could ever do. And even if it is radiated in the future, even if turmeric is radiated in the future, it's still got all those nutrients. It's still so much better. You can fight off the issue by preventive eating is what I'm trying to say to you and that's why I'm making that other video it'll be a day or two before I get it out there but it'll, it'll be very I'll have everything in that it'll be the real deal for you and I'll make sure it's super high quality for everybody in case it gets re-uploaded over and over it maintains um, and it'll be all the screen captures so that everybody can even find it and I'll have all the links below it for everybody okay folks that's uh, that's a wrap for me a minute an hour and three minutes is really good We'll be back tomorrow on day 21, and hopefully, hopefully we'll find another dummy like the D-News that we can come out and bounce their heads around like a soccer ball and enjoy our day at least a little bit that way. Thanks, folks. Take care. We need to get subscribed and get this unity stronger and beat YouTube at their own game. Okay, That's what this is about. Like I say, go to the Remix button, hit the Remix button, that way you'll have this video and and keep up with this. Otherwise, you know, YouTube's just going to control us, guys, and it's, it's really bad.